a few more items. One of them is free path loss. Your antenna, if you imagine it as a stick, is going to radiate energy in many directions. That makes that as the wave goes away, it's pretty much like if you threw a pebble in water. Let me show you. As you see that drop falling into water and spreading away, you see that the wave is pretty strong, pretty high, very close to where the drop touched the water. But as it spreads away, it becomes thinner. That's something you've seen many times, right, if you ever threw anything in water. So it gets thinner. So that's what we call free path loss, which means that the amount of energy you have is just the drop touching the water. There is no more of it. And that energy is concentrated in a small circle at the beginning. Then, as the signal spreads on the water surface, that same amount of energy is now spread in a larger circle. There is not more energy, right? It's the same amount, but it just has to be divided around a larger circle. So in each unit of surface, there is less energy because it's covering a wider space. So that's what we call free path loss. In Wi-Fi, it means that as you send a signal, it's going to be very strong close to the antenna that sends a signal. And as it moves away, it's going to weaken. And at some point, it's going to be so weak that you won't be able to hear it or use it anymore. That is important because, in theory, the energy you send is going to go to the infinite of space, right? It doesn't stop anywhere unless it's absorbed by something. But what we mean with this free path loss is that there is a distance beyond which it stops being usable. And that's going to be important for you to design your cells because you want to know that distance depending on the amount of energy you put at the beginning. That's called a link budget, how much energy you have to put at the beginning to reach with efficiency a certain distance. Be careful, though. Do not confuse free path loss with another phenomenon, which is called slow fading. What slow fading is, is the energy that goes around a big obstacle. You see that store, for example, suppose you have an access point just next to it, and the wave of the access point goes around the store building, and just behind is going to join and continue. That point is going to have less energy than on the other side of the building, just because the building structure itself absorbed part of the energy. And even if the wave went around, it still got some loss doing so. If you throw pebbles in a swimming pool, you, you'll see that's what happens when you have a stone somewhere that doesn't move. You'll see the wave coming to that stone, and you'll see the waves joining on the other side of the stone, but weaker. So that's slow fading. It's not something we worry too much about indoor, again. Something that matters outdoor when you do point-to-point -point links. Indoor, we suffer from free path loss, like everywhere else. Outdoor, they also worry about slow fading, but we don't worry about that indoor.